I went to school for 28 years, completing high school, college, graduate, and even medical school until finally I quit the job that all of this school qualified me for. But the question is, was it worth it? I've talked to thousands of students teaching learning, productivity, and life skills. And I would say that there are four big arguments for going to college that I hear the most. First is that college will increase your earnings. Second, college gives you important life skills. Third, college helps you figure out what you want to do with your life. And last, college is an irreplaceable experience. So we're going to take each of these and assess, are they true, are they false, or are they somewhere in between? And as I go through each of the points, I'll let you know how it panned out for me and where I fall on what I'm going to call a regretometer. On one end, being complete bliss about my decision to go to college, and on the other end, utter regret. So popular opinion is that a college degree will boost your earnings, and public opinion is right. If we look at data, this is actually true. Statistics from the US Bureau of Labor show higher average earnings the higher you climb up the education ladder and lower rates of unemployment. And you might think, wow, this is a really compelling reason to stay in school. Regretometer goes that way. But let's dig into this a little bit deeper. If you look at the top earning occupations in the US, they pretty much all fall under the professional degrees. And not that surprisingly, with doctors claiming all the top spots. So what that tells us is that it's really dependent on why you're going to school. You know, personally, I did choose to go into medicine, so there's no regret there. But according to data, most people go to college for liberal arts, business, humanities, and general studies. General studies. And it's also important to consider that these are average numbers, which means that some people are going to earn more and some people are going to earn less, right? There are plenty of case studies of people who never went to college and are super successful, right? People like Mark Zuckerberg dropped out of college. Bill Gates dropped out of college. Now, to be fair, those names that I just dropped there are outliers of, you know, the uber successful people. But it does help put a name to that type of persona and to explain that success is not exclusive to people who go to college. And it's actually likely that these people achieved this kind of success because they dropped out of college. Because the cost of continuing wouldn't have allowed them to do what they did. Tuition prices rise each year. And over the past few decades, the price of school has doubled, even tripled for some private schools. But the starting salary of graduates has more or less stayed the same. And more than just tuition, you know, there's housing to pay for, there's food, supplies, and many people have to take out loans. And of course, something to consider is that the longer you stay in school, school, the tuition prices climb higher and higher, right? Professional schools like medical school or pharmacy school cost double or even triple the amount that an undergraduate degree would get you. And this is a very important point to consider because student loan debt is now the second largest consumer generated debt behind mortgages. A lot of people end up paying back these loans for decades, you know, sometimes for the rest of their life. But the scary part is that tuition is only a part of the true cost of education. There's a huge time investment, anywhere between two years for any transfer students up to 10 years for, you know, people who go into medicine or law. Even after completing medical school, I would have had four more years of residency training before I actually achieved that, you know, top cush doctor salary that education is marketed for. I would be in my early 30s by then. So that also adds to some of the psychological costs of going to school for a long time, you know, including all the stress and the anxiety about studying for exams, taking exams, competing against other gunner top students and stuff. And so what does that all mean? People are paying much more to go to school while earning pretty much the same as they ever have and competing against a lot of new college grads. You know, back when I was 17 and applying for college, I had never earned a dime in my life. I didn't even know what $100,000 in cash even looked like, let alone pulling out it in loans. I had no experience about what kind of jobs there were in the world, what the world was even like. I've never paid taxes before. And so to put that big of a decision, like choosing whether or not to go to college on someone with such little life experience is pretty scary, right? And I'm saying this as someone who actually genuinely enjoyed medical school, but it's hard not to feel some sense of regret for spending the majority of my 20s as a student. So for that, I'm going to have to move the regretometer over to this side. So another argument is that in college, you learn critical life skills. This is what Brian Kaplan, a professor at GMU, calls the human capital theory. Basically, that education pays for itself through the valuable skills that you learn. And at first glance, you might think, yes, you do so much growing up in college, right? You become an adult. You learn how to be independent and do your laundry and clean up after yourself. 
yourself. But if you think about it, those skills aren't really tied to being college. That's what being 18 is. You figure out how to do those things. Aside from, you know, basic life skills, you might also think that going to college is about the classes and about the education. Well, 82% of college students say the material they learn isn't interesting. 41% say the material isn't even relevant. And it's kind of hard to support the valuable skills argument when most college students live by the C's get degrees mantra, right? This is why we do everything we can to cut corners or find the easiest classes and professors and cram for exams because we plan to forget everything we learned the moment we get our test grades back. Students don't care about learning, they care about the degree. And I know this because I was no different, right? In college, I took History of the Beatles. What was the other one? Like Intro to Anthropology or Communications. I took them because they were easy. As Brian Kaplan puts it, higher education is the only product where the consumer tries to get as little out of it as possible. So unless the valuable skill we're talking about is how to do the bare minimum and get what you want, then yes. Sure, that's a valid argument. But just for kicks, let's say that you are in the 0.1%, you know, Doctor Strange type with photographic memory, and you do retain all of that juicy knowledge that you learned in college. What does that change? Not much, actually. I mean, you might get really good at trivia night, but about it. You know, in med school, we spend the first two years learning the theory and the science behind the art and practice of medicine. But even as someone who got good grades, the moment that I entered the hospital, it didn't matter because real learning happens on the job. You know, if I miss a few quiz questions, nobody cares. If I ditch class, nobody cares either, right? The teacher probably doesn't even know I wasn't there. But if I miscalculate an insulin dose, someone could die. If I don't show up to work, my team is screwed for the entire day picking up my slack and I'd probably get fired. Through working, you get real consequences, you get real emotions and real rewards from your actions. I probably learned more about what it means to be a valuable human being from one week working at Coffee Bean as a barista than all of my years in college. You know, it's kind of strange. We always think that the top students, you know, the definition of a smart student is someone who gets good grades. Funny how it's not someone who does good work. We all know the job market is ruthless, and what makes you successful in school just doesn't transfer over. Because in reality, if you're really, really good at what you do, and you produce consistent, high-quality work, then you're not going to get laid off. And if you couldn't smell it from the way I'm talking about this, I will definitely have to pull my regret meter over to this side and say that the skills you learn just aren't that valuable. So the next argument is that college is a time to discover what you want to do with your life. And I'm going to take a firm stance on this one and say this is absolutely bullshit. If anything, college is an excuse to delay figuring it out. It's like, great, I have four years before I have to decide anything, so let's just worry about it later. Usually when I say this to people, they're like, well, that's easy for you to say, Maddie. You're motivated and ambitious enough to go out and do those things. Most people need time, and college provides so many opportunities to do that. And sure, college might provide a few opportunities to network with, I don't know, alumni, faculty, and stuff. But let me throw a bone in here. For $10,000 a year, you know, which is the price of tuition. You could basically buy your way into any community mastermind. You can get some coaches, you can get a personal trainer also, or find a business that you want to work with. You know, with social media, you can send DMs on LinkedIn, Instagram, X. You can email YouTubers or smaller local businesses and then get paid to work and learn at the same time. Opportunities are everywhere. You just have to reach out and grab them. I think the problem is that people just simply don't realize it's an option. Like growing up, I was always told that opportunities are there for those who are educated you know, or hold degrees. But in reality, opportunities exist everywhere to those who are brave enough to just ask for them and then invest in them. This is pretty funny too. Did you know that anyone off the street can actually sit in and attend a college class? Like I could fly to Harvard right now and then tomorrow just walk into class and sit down and experience the wonders of college education. So why doesn't anyone take advantage of this? And it's because the classroom is a boring place. It's not very inspiring. I can't name a single college class I took that blew my mind. And it's not for lack of trying. I had lots of great teachers, don't get me wrong. I think it's because class doesn't actually reflect what life is actually like. You know, studying for an art history class is very different from earning a living doing what an art historian would do. You know, taking calculus or geometry doesn't give me any real insight into what a mathematician's job prospects are or what kind of opportunities they have or what their day to day looks like. School is just this little bubble. I had this realization big time in medical school. Like I had this fantasy that being a doctor was going to be like going around, saving 
saving lives all day, you know, using my knowledge with other doctors and curing cancer and stuff like that. It wasn't until I started working and following the residents around that I realized 80% or more of the job is just sitting at a computer, charting stuff and answering phone calls. The best way to figure out what you want to do with your life is to try as many working experiences as possible. Not classroom experiences, but real world experiences. The sad reality is a lot of students graduate unemployed with no job prospects, no real skills, tons of debt and loans, and they're no closer to figuring out what they want to do with their life than before they started. They basically end up at the same spot they were four years ago. This is why I say it's like just delaying that decision. And now they have to make a very similar decision. Do I invest in even more education now and get like a master's or a professional degree? Or should I start to look for work now? I guess what I'm saying here is that it's inevitable that eventually you're going to have to learn how the world works. And the sooner you rip off that band-aid and force yourself to step out of your comfort zone and try new things, the sooner you can start crossing off the stuff that you don't like. So in terms of figuring out your life, I think college is super overrated. So let's pull the regret meter this way. The final argument is that college is an irreplaceable experience. The summer before college, I remember I was chilling at home with my dad and I was looking for part-time jobs. And he looked at me and he told me, you know, you have the rest of your life to work. So why don't you just enjoy your time and have fun? And of course, you know, he threw in the whole typical Asian parent and get good grades as well. But I was like, sick dad. <laughs> I will do that. And that was one of my goals with college. And now thinking back to all the fun, crazy memories I had, it's hard not to smile. You know, I will say that there won't be another time in your life when you're surrounded by hundreds and thousands of other people, you know, discovering and becoming who they are, going through the same experiences, having little to no responsibilities, and the best part with no parent supervision. It's almost a rite of passage to live in a shit dorm, eat cafeteria food, and then share a bunk bed with a stranger. But um, I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of nice. You know, now that I'm graduated, I kind of take for granted how nice it was that day to day I could just walk down the hall and see my friends, you know, complain about having to do homework and stuff. And we can go to parties or we can just walk over to the cafeteria. We can go play some basketball. That experience is actually really unique. Now, don't get me wrong. You can also totally make friends, eat shit food and have social experiences without going to college. It's just a lot harder and you really have to put yourself out there, right? It's like a completely different environment being in the real world than in school, which I kind of said is this bubble. Like sure, you might have a few coworkers and stuff, but everyone's, you know, at different stages in their life on different paths and they're kind of doing their own thing. And so I do think that a huge selling point for going to college is the unforgettable shared experience. And for that, I will pull back the regret meter to bliss. But if I didn't try to get involved in activities, I didn't try to be social or go meet people or step out of my comfort zone in any way, and I just, you know, stayed in my dorm or went home on the weekends, I don't know if I would say the same thing. So overall thoughts based on those four arguments, I would have to say that for me personally, college was not worth it. At least that's what I believe at this current point in my life, and who knows, that might change in the future. But your situation is probably a lot different than mine. So what should you do? Well, the short answer is it depends on what you want, because there are some paths that do require traditional education. Like if you want to become a doctor or lawyer or engineer or pharmacist or anything that requires a professional degree, then great go to college, you're gonna love it. But if right now you're sitting on the fence, the most important thing you can do to minimize the regret you have is to ask a hard question. Why do you wanna to go to college? If it's because you don't know what else to do, or your friends say that you should, or that everyone around you is saying that you should, or everyone you see is going to college, then I would say, well, first watch this video again, so you can kind of recap the points that I mentioned. And then next, ask people who were successful who did go to college, and then also ask people who were successful and then didn't go to college, and then learn what they did and how they got there. I think that so many young people feel like school is the only option. And if you don't go to school, you're a loser, which is also not true. There are plenty of losers who went to college as well. I mean, you're looking directly at one. If after high school, instead of going to college immediately, you try to start a business or work for a startup or get a job for two years, even one year, you know, just something as simple as one year, 
what would that look like? And if during that year you hated every moment of it and you still want to go to college, then you can always just apply again, right? There's no time frame on when you can or can't go to school. School's always going to be there. It's always an option. You know, when I started medical school, I was 24 years old. There were people in my class who were 28 years old, 30 years old. There was even a 43 year old in my class. And I think that the people who end up going back to school after gathering some experiences and learning more about the world go to school with a lot more more intention and a lot more purpose than those who don't. You know, they end up being much better students. They end up getting a lot more value out of that unique environment that they're in because they put the time and the effort to experiment and try life before committing to something like school. My point is you can be incredibly successful going to college or not going to college because at the end of the day, it's all about intention and what is the plan? Now, if you're already in college, then you don't need to drop out if I've persuaded you to the regret side in any way. But the single most valuable thing you can do right now is to learn how to learn because that skill will allow you to spend a fraction of the time studying compared to everyone else. And then you'll also be able to enjoy the unforgettable experiences and have room for starting a project or a side hustle or getting more cool experiences all at the same time. And if that sounds like something you'd be down for, then I definitely recommend checking out our study skills playlist over here. These are the foundational things we teach in StudyQuest and at Cajun Co Academy.